back everybody. Today we're going to move through some dynamic movements, some explosive power jumping exercises for you to go ahead and continue to work on uh, your ability to get off the floor. All right. Uh, however, these are going to be relevant for your general movement around the basketball court because some of them do actually incorporate some lateral movement as well. All right. So there's a lot of movement around the, the pelvic girdle uh, and the hip joint. Of course, the ankles and the knees all come into play. Got to make sure that our core is ready to go. So don't forget, you're always working on core stability as well. Because without the core, you're going to go ahead and you're going to have some muscular imbalances. Um, now, whether you're a, a, a one foot jumper or a two foot jumper, uh, we've got to make sure that there's symmetry in everything we do. Now, daily functionality means that we have some muscular imbalances in that you might walk up a step with the same lead foot every single time. If somebody rolled a soccer ball, football to you, you might kick it with the same foot. All right, we all have our preferences in which our lead foot, lead arm, left hand, right hand, whatever it be. So it's important for you to go ahead and make sure you get as much symmetry in your muscular ability, all right, so that we iron out some of those muscular imbalances. Now, one of the important things uh, that I'm always asked is, how many reps or sets should I be doing for any of these kind of plyometric dynamic movements? Uh, and it really depends on your level of competition and your age, okay? If you're a seasoned athlete and you're used to doing pre-season work, you're used to doing plyometric dynamic movements, then you can do a little more workload, okay? If you're younger and you're not used to doing these kind of movements, you really have to start slowly. Baby steps is the way, all right? So in answer to that, I would suggest if you're at the beginning range, your reps are around four to six reps for every movement and about three to four sets, depending, uh, again, on your confidence and your ability to do this. Now, if you are a seasoned athlete and you've been doing this kind of movement, my suggestion would be around eight to 10 reps and maybe six to eight sets of this, all right? So that you can really up that workload. However, it's really important that you nail the fundamental movements. The second you start to do what I call a compromise of the joint movement is when you call it a day and you either rest or you move on to the next set or exercise joint movement that you're doing. All right, the first movement we're gonna do, the dynamic jumping. This is for those of you that prefer to jump off of one foot. Uh, this is a split stance up into a two foot landing. Now, there's some important factors with this. So Clay, let's get you set up right here. So we're now gonna go and we're gonna choose uh, which leg you wanna start on Clay, it's entirely up to you. So we're gonna start off the left leg. So make sure that you're a distance away from the box that you can actually safely land on top. Now, whenever you're jumping onto an elevated surface, of course, there's an element of danger. So just make sure firstly, that this is actually the right height for you, all right? This is a, a, a soft sponge, plyometric box. You can get wood ones, um, anything you can use. You might have any box in your garage. Go ahead and see, as long as it's stable and it's not gonna slip away from under you, go ahead and use that. So we're gonna start on the left foot. The idea is we're now going to go into a dynamic uh, position or ready stance if you like. So we're going to be engaged through the core. Go ahead, Clay, stay on that one leg. So we're going to bring the right foot off the floor. As we go up, we're going to bring the arms back, still staying contracted, engaged within the core. We're going to use that forward momentum, all right? We've got uh, uh, anterior deltoid here, which are contracted to give us that forward. Now we've got uh, glutes and quads are going to contract to give us our upward velocity or our movement. So the idea is, Clay, let's go in our ready position, okay? We're gonna go ahead and swing the arms back and we're gonna jump and land on two feet on the top of the box to a full extension. Really contract the glutes and the quads to finish with. All right, go ahead, Clay, and stay when we're up there. All right, beautiful, hand up, good. All right, now that's really important, that's okay. What you can do is, if you're a novice, a beginner, step down as Clay did then, just to eliminate some of the joint impact and give the ankles, hips, and knees uh, a little bit of rest, all right? Depends what you're jumping on. If you're on a concrete or a playground, there's gonna be a little more impact through there. We're not too bad here today. So you can either step down or, Clay, let's get you in your finished position, okay? You can actually step back into a jump and control the landing. So get and step off with one foot, Clay, and control, all right? What I'd like to see is, Clay, control that movement. I don't know if you noticed, we had a little step back. So everything is under control and real strict. So as you step off, I want you to throw those arms back. One thing to remember is if you have a soft landing, it's a controlled landing, all right? We don't wanna compromise this joint movement. We're reducing our margin of error, all right? We do not wanna injure ourselves. So let's go ahead and do a couple more of these plays. So we're gonna start on the right foot, ready stance, contract, engage the core. Now we're gonna dynamically explode to the top, 
here, up, finish. Now, you can either step back or jump back, all right? Notice we still had a little bit of step back there, all right? You wanna make sure that we hold that position without a step back for at least a second or two before we maybe relax for a second and then go into our next one. So play. Uh, let's go ahead now and go off one off the other foot. So we're gonna lift the left foot and we're gonna use dynamic here, loaded, okay? Contract, stand on the box, quiet landing, controlled landing. Okay, step back off. Good, and throw back. Brilliant, well done. Okay, the next dynamic movement we're gonna do is called a pogo jump, all right? Now, this again is really, really important that we engage and contract the core, and we have that stability through the, the pelvic girdle and the hip joint, all right? So, what we're gonna do is play. Let's get you in the ready stance. Let's move this just a little bit here. Step forward a little bit. Okay, good. So, now we're gonna lift one foot off the floor. It's up to you what you start with. So, we're gonna now pogo jump. So, you're gonna bring this right foot back, okay? Ready stance, engage the core. Now you're gonna go ahead and drive that knee up high and jump as high as you can. And as you land, you're coming back to your original start position with that right foot as we started here, a little bit rear to the body, okay? So a little uh, extended back. Here we go. Good, soft land. Good, good control. It's all right, let's do it. Here we go. Good, and back, and up. Good. Nice. Well done, Clay. So that's your pogo jump. Now, the idea is really use that forward momentum, that contraction of the anterior deltoid, contract the core, engage the core, reach up. You can either imagine you're going for a rebound. You might even want to practice your shooting technique. All right. Get that elbow under. Remember the acronym BEEF, balance, elbow, extend elevation or flick if you like. You can go ahead and practice that. The dynamics are the same. What you could do just to put a little wrinkle into this is do it with a basketball. So you would have the ball out in front. You're gonna go ahead, same movement, drive up, ball up in the air, rip down as you land. So you come back to your ready stance to go through for your next movement. So the next move we're now gonna do, as we mentioned at the start, there is some lateral movement. It's so, so important for us, whether we're trying to be uh, skywalkers up there like Vince Carter or some of the other great leapers in basketball, or the game of basketball, we still have to be able to move laterally, whether it's offensively or defensively, all right? So it's important we get that stabilization through the knees, the ankles, and the hips, but not just stabilization to prevent injury, it's dynamic, so we can get to A to B as quickly as possible, especially when we're defending. Now, you're gonna to need to go forwards, and you're gonna to need to go backwards, not just all verticality, all right? It's not just vertical movements. However, with this one, this is our lateral jump. We're gonna start in our ready stance. Doesn't matter which one, Clay. So you're gonna start with one foot up in the air. Now you're gonna jump over to the right. Good, here and back over. So you're gonna keep this foot elevated, okay? Here and over, good, good. Now look at that stability. We wanna engage the core. Keep going, Clay. So you wanna engage the core, good, and over. Now, one other wrinkle you can add in you don't want to go up in the air and come back down. You want to try and keep that same center of gravity. So if you can, let's do it a couple of times, Clay. Try and keep that head height exactly the same. Way better, good. Yeah, good. Now, as you go, you can put another wrinkle in and you can start to try and leap laterally just a little bit further each time. Now again, remember our, our reps and sets. We talked if you're a novice player and you're just starting with this dynamic plyometric movement, we're talking four to six repetitions. We might do three to four sets, depending on how we feel. The second you compromise that joint movement is the second that that rep, that set is over. And we move on or we don't do it again. Listen to your body, all right? Sharp pain, we stop. Dull aches, muscle burns, we work through and we drive through it.